So Manchester United scored three goals yesterday after not scoring in seven hours and completed a brilliant comeback in a 3-2 win versus Aston Villa. And even at half time, Manchester United hadn't played that bad to be 2-0 down. It was just down to poor set piece defending and just lack of quality and ability to score goals in the final third. But Tenog made a massive tactical change at halftime, which allowed Manchester United to gain control of the game and actually create chances. Now, this first change came to the press, and then we're going to dive into other changes he made, like the starting lineup, like the build-up structure, and why Manchester United was so good in that second half versus Aston Villa. I actually think that second half United played versus Aston Villa is probably the best performance they've had all season in terms of creating chances, and a lot of it came down to Tenog's tactics, which I've been critical of for them getting getting up spot on. So as you can see on my screen, this is Manchester United's pressing structure. And although the numbers are accurate, uh, the left winger number 11 is Rashford, the right winger number 10 is Garnacho, and Hoyland is now number nine, the striker. But just imagine the United setup. Rashford on the left, Hoyland in the middle, Garnacho on the right, you've got Bruno, you've got Eriksson as those two eights, you've got Main on his own as a six, Delo at left back, Wamba Saka at right back, Varane and Evans, and then Banana. Manchester United are the red dots, Villa are the blue dots. And sort of how when Villa were playing out from the back, Emmy Martinez has the ball here. It, Villa was sort of getting through United's press quite easily because what did Manchester United do in build up when Villa were playing out from the back? All of a sudden, Hoyland would move over and mark the sort of um, left centre back for them or on the left or their right centre back, but on the left for us. Rashford would go mark out their sort of right back and Hoyle and Garnacho would come over and pass uh, stop the passes to sort of uh, Diego Carlos, which would leave Digne number five in a lot of space on that sort of left-hand side. And this you can see here, you can see this here. This is how United start. And then when Villa play out from the back, this is how we press. We try to force Villa to go down our left-hand side. But by doing that, it opened up space for Digne. And if Villa could play that pass into Digne, which they did multiple times, all of a sudden, you've got Digne and Ramsey doing a 2v1 versus Wan-Bissaka, who's number four here, on the right-hand side. So I'm going to show you a little bit better how this works. OK, so hopefully this sums up a little bit better for you guys. But here's Martinez. He's playing the ball. And because as soon as Martinez plays the ball, obviously Garnacho sort of starts here. Hoyland sort of starts here. And, and Rashford kind of starts here. But as soon as Martinez plays the ball, Rashford closes down the right back. Uh, Hoyland will come over to the right centre back. Garnacho will come over to the left centre back. And normally there'll be a little bit of space. Someone can go in here and then they can play it out to Digne. And all of a sudden Villa have got this 2v1 with Digne bombing up against wan -Bissaka, which is good as he is one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to make it very difficult for wan -Bissaka. I think that is a, a better way of explaining it. But what happened that was different in the second half was that wan -Bissaka committed to the press. So all of a sudden, the big difference in the second half, when Martinez had the ball and Villa were building out from the back, is wan -Bissaka came and pushed up here with Digne. And that meant all of a sudden, there was the man-to-man -man press in midfield here. When Villa were trying to play out from the back, obviously um, this guy comes deeper and Varane goes out more here. But all of a sudden, when Villa were trying to play out from the back, they couldn't find anyone. They played the ball here. And all of a sudden, Digne is now being marked by wan who's pushed very high at the pitch. So then they're going back to Martinez and then Martinez is playing it long and there's Kobi Maynou. He's winning the ball in midfield. Delo's often inverting and helping out Kobi Maynou winning the ball in midfield here. Villa were often going long, but we were regaining possession very well. You've also got to think about Villa just struggled to play out from the back. And many times they did play out from the back and boom, someone like Ericsson is here. And all of a sudden we play it into Rashford, Man United have attack and boom. There was just much more opportunities created for obviously sort of Rashford, um, not only for Hoyland, but much more opportunities created. And because Manchester United actually had a lineup of Maino, Eriksson and Bruno in midfield, three players who were very good in possession, it meant that United could take advantage of this. It meant that once United fixed the press, they actually gained a lot more control of the game. And because United had gained a lot more control of the game, they were winning possession back in higher areas. But because they had players like Eriksson, Maino and Bruno, instead of the likes of McTominay, who were a lot more technically better and better in possession. That meant when United had possession in good areas and won the ball back, they could make the most out of it. So let's talk about sort of wan Bissaka joining the press and, and the benefits of this. This forced Villa to go long, but Maino and Delo did very well to win many duels. Villa found it hard to play out from the back, so lost the ball more and lost the ball more in higher up positions, which meant that Bruno Fernandes often got the ball in the final third and could boom, create. Bruno Fernandes made five through balls, which is the most in a single game for a year and a half in the Premier League. It played right into a hand. Obviously, Villa's high line helped us, but also Manchester 
United and Ten Hag particularly lined up perfectly and we had the players that could punish Villa in behind. Rashford and Garnacho made good runs in behind. Eriksen and Bruno have the ability to punish Villa in behind. And as you can see here, Eriksen had space and time in behind to go long because in actual possession, Eriksen kind of dropped to the left-hand side and it was kind of this... 2-4 build-up, where wan was a right mid, Eriksen was a left mid, and Delo inverted with Maynard to help Maynard out. We're going to talk about that in a second. But Eriksen kind of went onto this left-hand side and was a bit deeper, but that meant he had the time to play the balls in behind to the gun actually, and Rashford was effective. It also meant having those four players behind Bruno in possession that could retain the ball, got the ball to Bruno in higher areas so Bruno could create more, and he obviously made five through balls, the most in the game since De Bruyne in 2022, most of the game in 2023 in the Premier League. And also because of Villa's high line, we had Rashford, we had gone after the runners. Ericsson and Bruno were really well positioned to play them in and it, and it played into our advantage and Tenal got his starting 11 spot on. Tenal got his tactical adaptions at half-time to commit wan to the press spot on. And one of the most important things about today was Bruno in the 10 role. There was times where actually a lot of the game, Ericsson was more advanced than Bruno, but we managed to get Bruno in that 10 position. Now, Bruno's been playing deeper to accommodate McTominay, who averages 0.3 key passes a game, where Bruno averages like four or five key passes a game. So it felt ridiculous that, you know, McTominay was playing 10 and Bruno was dropping deeper. And I've been complaining about this a lot. But he had Maynard and Ericsson that are good in possession and Delo inverting midfield at times, which helped. But Delo's not used to inverting in midfield. There was times where he was too wide, but we don't need to get into that. And because Man United could retain the ball better in midfield and we had players that can receive the ball in midfield and actually pass the ball forward without losing it, unlike McTominay. And even Casemiro has struggled with this as well. So it's not just me ganging up on McTominay. It meant that we could find Bruno in really high up areas of the pitch and find Bruno in good areas where he could make a difference. He made 30 passes into the final third, seven crosses, and he created four chances. We managed to find Bruno in key areas. And we know that Bruno Fernandes is a world-class player. He gets a lot of stick from Man United fans, but even Bruno is not having his best season. His first in the Premier League for key passes, expected assists, progressive passes, crosses, shots among Premier League midfielders. Bruno ranks one for pretty much all these statistics among Premier League midfielders. But the reason like he's not registering the crazy numbers is because the Man United players around him have been underperforming and because the system that Tenag have been playing, dropping Bruno deeper to accommodate McTominay, was not getting the best out of Bruno. And all of a sudden, Bruno plays in his main role, but he's also got balanced midfielders behind him where we can unlock Bruno. And you can see how good he is. People complaining, why has it been so good for Portugal this season and OK for United? It's not that Bruno's a bad player. It's just that it was this bad system at United that wasn't making the best out of Bruno. And I was very critical of Tenal for that. So the structure also got the best out of Bruno. And the game and obviously the starting eleven played into sort of Tenal's hands with Bruno and making balls in behind, Rashford running in behind against the high line. It was going to be difficult. But I wanted to speak about Mena as well. Kobe Mayno is having a very quietly underrated game. This is like the seventh game Kobe Mayno has played in the Premier League or played for United first team and looked absolutely solid, not out of place. And Oliver mentioned it here. Ericsson took up those higher positions on the left, as I showed you earlier. Ericsson was on the left, even higher than Bruno did at chances. But this left Kobe Mayno to control the tempo and build up while taking on responsibility of protecting the bat line. Kobe Mayno defensively put on put in a shift, protected the bat line really well, won a lot of duels because Villa played the ball long. Obviously got a bit of help from the low inverting, but for the most part, he was on his own and he was very good. But Kobe Mayno was very good at having the ball at his feet, controlling the tempo and playing those forward, forward passes into Bruno, into Ericsson to get the ball moving. And because Delo also inverted next to Kobe Mayno. It meant that also Delo was closer to Mayno, so it was easier to find those short passes to get the ball moving quicker and be more direct. And Kobe Mayno had an absolutely solid game. He helped with Delo inverting, but he playing as a lone six on his own at 18 years of age in one of the most difficult positions that you know, a lot of players have struggled. And he moved the ball so well. And he was key today. His ability to retain the ball and move the ball quickly, find Ericsson, get the ball to Bruno really helped United. And I think one of the biggest differences today was not just the press, but the midfield balance, because this is the best performance Manchester United have had in possession. You know, Manchester United have been poor in possession this season, really struggled to keep the ball. But this was one of the best performances United have had at retaining and making use of having possession, which they've lacked. And that is because Tenal got his lineup spot on. Tenal, with the players fit, Tenal could not have picked a better starting eleven. Amrabat was out. Um, Diogo, you know, Luke Shaw was out, so Delo had to play left back. Amrabat was out, so it was between Ericsson and McTominay to play next to Maino. He dropped and he played Garnacho on the right, and Garnacho was a better player than Anthony. Garnacho, while he's a natural left winger, on the right, because he's so direct, he makes opportunities for himself. And also on the right hand side, it will simplify his game. He did put in a few crosses, but he just couldn't quite find them. But he created those shots himself, he made those runs. Tenog picked the best lineup possible and played them in the best positions. Rashford cannot play on the right. Rashford could not play striker. Rashford has been poor this season, but we know from last season Rashford is a very good player on the left wing 
when he's good. When Rashford's good, he's good. You know, we know Bruno is very good as a 10, but he's been playing on the right-hand side and deeper. And Eric Tenard picked the best starting level to put everyone in their natural positions and then tactically adapted at half-time when the press wasn't working. And Eric Tenard got a spot on. And I think one of the other things that he did really well that a lot of people haven't mentioned is the build-up shape. And I think this is why we signed Anana, who hasn't been great. He probably should have saved the first one. But we saw Manchester United sort of play this 2-4 build-up shape where Anana almost comes in as the left centre-back and Evans moves wide, which sometimes Man City do at uh, Edison. And that also helped United in possession because we could move the ball a lot quicker from back to forward in possession. And that's why I say Man United played the best game in possession. Even when they were 2 down, they played the best game in possession because of this. The reason they went 2-0 down was they couldn't control the game because they were getting 2v1 overloads on the right-hand side and we were crap at defending set pieces. But we saw this sort of Anana come in and then obviously Johnny Evans dropped back with Varane and we played this 2-4 shape sort of in possession with Ericsson going sort of wide. Ericsson was a bit higher up than actually put there. And then Delo, Maino, Wan-Bissaka. And it just meant that United could move the ball a lot better and it really helped us in possession. So not only did Tenal pick the lineup that helped with possession, Maino, Ericsson, Bruno and midfield players that can retain the ball with technical ability, but Ten Hag also bit the lineup of players that can run in behind and exploit Villa's high line, although we're offside a lot. But he also sort of got his sort of shape right as well. And in conclusion, I think it was a good game from United. I think if you take away those two set pieces, the first half wasn't good, but the first half wasn't awful. It's like a 10 minute crumble where we conceded one, they conceded another. Two awful set pieces, two awful moments of defending. Uh, but Tenor got a starting 11 spot on. His tactics worked. He adapted his tactics at halftime to win the game. And I was very critical of Tenor's man management versus West Ham because that lost us the game. Uh, his substitution versus West Ham lost us the game today. He got a spot on. The front three, I think we've learned, is our best front three. And Man United deserve to win. They deserve to beat a good Villa side that has been in the title race. And while Man United will be, probably be inconsistent and lose to Nottingham Forest, because that's what we're like at the moment, it was a good performance. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below for new. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye.